8.5 deals with the present value of an annuity. So in this video, I'm going to show you first how to derive the formula for the present value of an annuity, and also do a few examples so that um, you know how to work the formulas. So what we have here is a number of regular payments that you're going to be paying yourself. In other words, you're going to be withdrawing money this time. The last video, we were putting money in to have a certain amount out in the future. Now we're going to put money in in the present and withdraw these amounts in the future. In other words, I want to know what do I have to deposit into the bank today to be able to withdraw my regular payments for a number of years. So each one of these regular payments needs to be brought to the present. So obviously it's less, the, the amount you put in the bank today is going to be less than you would need to put in if like, say for instance, I say I want to take out $100 every month for 30 years. Well, I'm not going to do 100 times 30 times 12 and deposit that today. Because of the time value of money, this money that you're putting in today is going to be earning some interest along the way. So you don't have to put in as much today as you would um, in order to take out these amounts. So I want to know what is the present value of each of these R's. So the regular payment, I'm going to bring each one to the present. So we used a formula before, A equals P times 1 plus I to the N. And we also rearranged that to solve for P. And we had P equals A over 1 plus I to the N. And that's what this is here. So my A is my regular payment, 1 plus I to the N. So here would be to the power of 1, power of 2, power of 3, and all the way down to the power of N. Now, the textbook does this formula a little bit differently. This way is much easier for um, to understand if you do the sum of these payments in reverse. So it doesn't matter if I add 1 to 2 to 3 or 3 to 2 to 1, same equation. So here I'm saying PV. Now PV is going to be present value, okay, the present value. So the present value is going to be R over 1 plus I to the N plus R, this one, dot, 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 plus 3, plus 2, plus 1. Nothing very exciting there at all, just writing it out. Now we're going to use the sum of a geometric sequence here, so a geometric series where we have a as our first term. In this case, we're going to use a as the last number um, times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. So here we have sn we're replacing with present value. My rate is going to be 1 plus i, which is what we're doing here. Right? Just a simple 1 plus i, 1 plus i. And the a is going to be r over 1 plus i to the n. So here now this became my a here, r is replaced by 1 plus i to the n, and 1 plus i minus 1. In the next line, what we have is the regular payment. So I've put the regular payment times, now 1 plus i minus 1 is just i. So this just becomes i, and I put it here. Okay, so that's, that's how it got to be there. And I have 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over 1 plus i to the n. Now, when you have any fractions, you can break them into parts. So I have r over i, and then I have this part here, which I broke into two parts. So that would be like me saying, what's 3 plus 2 over 7? And you'd say, well, that could be written as 3 over 7 plus 2 over 7, right? So that's all I've done here. So I broke this into two parts, this over this minus 1 over this. This obviously is 1, so I have 1 here, minus 1 plus i to the negative n. All I did was bring this up to the numerator, which changed the sign. So there's your present value equation for um, an annuity. Present value is a regular payment, 1 minus 1 plus the interest rate to the negative n over i. Okay, so let's do some calculations so that you know how to work with this equation. And the first one, I've given you an example here. We're calculating the present value. So Ms. Havrock, that's me, 
figures that she will need $3,000 per month to live on when she retires. If she is 60 year years old now and estimates that she will live to be 90, how, will she, how much will she need to invest today if interest rates are 1% per annum compounded monthly? So that's probably a realistic rate of interest in today's market, right? As pathetic as it is. So I am trying to find my present value. So the R that I'm going to be withdrawing is $3,000. The I is 1% compounded monthly. So I have to take the 1, 1% 1 per annum. I have to divide that by 100 to make it as a decimal. 0.01 and then to get it to monthly I have to do 0.01 divided by 12. So you can leave it like that in your calculation or you could figure out the decimal. This would probably give you a more accurate answer because I'm sure it's not a pretty answer, right? So n, my n is going to be monthly so that's 12 times the number of years and the number of years is 30 from 60 to 90. So that's going to give me an N of 360 and your job is to calculate the present value. So as always, write out your formula. Always a good idea to do this little information so that you can just plug the values in. So I'm going to have R times 1 minus 1 plus I to the power of negative N all over I. So my regular payment is $3,000. $3,000 per month. 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.01 over 12 to the negative 360 divided by the interest rate which is 0 0.01 over 12. Okay, so this may look a little intimidating in terms of using your calculator, but I would do it in parts. I'm Sometimes calculators do weird things if you don't use proper brackets. Um, for instance, here you would need like a double bracket, right? Because this is, should be another bracket there. And if you mess that up, then you're going to be in trouble. So I would probably do this this to the minus 360, 1 minus my answer times 3000 and divided by this in brackets. So let's do that and see what we get. So I have 0 0.01 divided by 12. So that's my decimal. So see it says 8.333 times 10 to the minus 4. So remember when you see that E it means lots of decimals. So I'm adding 1 to that. I'm going to raise it to the negative 360 and I'm going to do 1 minus the previous answer. That gives me 0.259. I'm going to multiply it by 3000. That's my R value. And I'm going to divide this by bracket 0 0.01 divided by 12. Close the bracket and I get 9327.21.20. So that's $932,000. That's an awful lot of money. Okay, so let's figure out here what we would have to do in order to, um, like if I just said, okay, what if I needed 3000 a month for 3000 a month for 360 years. It should be more than that, right? So let's see what we get. 3,000 times 360 and I get 1,080,000. Okay, so you get away with putting in a little bit less than you would need to if you just had 360, like if you, you stuck this money under your bed or under your mattress and took out $3,000 every month. So because you're gaining interest on this present value and that's why this amount should be smaller than this one. Okay, so let's go on to another question.
calculating regular payments. Again, Ms. Haverat wins $3 million in the lottery. If she gives a million dollars to each of her two daughters and invests the balance at 3% per annum compounded monthly, how much can she withdraw each month for the next 30 years? So this is kind of a good question because you never know when you're going to win a lot of money. So as you can see here, I gave a million to each of my daughters who hopefully will manage their money very well. So that leaves me with a million dollars. So my present value of my money is one million dollars. So sometimes you'll get questions that have this sort of, you know, like whether you're making a down payment or you, you're giving something away. Make sure that you make your adjustment to make sure that you're only working with, like don't just start using numbers that you see without thinking about how they should be interpreted in the question. Okay, so I invest the balance at 3% per annum compounded monthly. So the interest rate is 3% per annum. So that's 0 0.03 per annum and monthly 0 0.03 divided by 12 monthly. How much can she withdraw each month? So I'm trying to solve for R for the next 30 years. So it's the same N this time, isn't it? I didn't change that up very well. So 30 years, 12 months in a year, my N is 360. Okay, so all you have to do now is get out your formula. So present value equals R, big bracket, 1 minus 1 plus, 1 plus I to the negative N all over I. Okay, so there's my nice formula. I've got everything I need to plug in. So I plug in the million here. So obviously things switch around depending on what variable you're trying to solve for. So I have R. And here I have 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.03 over 12. Now, as a teacher, I would highly recommend that you leave as many decimals as possible when you're dealing with money. I mean, you don't want to be out dollars and cents here. This is, this is your job. You're working for a bank. You've got to be accurate. Although in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to do all of this on a calculator which will make you really happy and wonder why you had to use these formulas. Okay, so I have R. I'm going to do the same thing here again with my calculator. I'm going to show you how to do this because I'm afraid that some of you just might make a little mistake. So I have 0 0.03 divided by 12. It's hard to see in this light. Okay, so that's my decimal, 0 0.0025. Well, that's kind of a nice one. Add one to it. So I have that, raise it to the power of negative 360, and I want 1 minus that, so 1 minus second answer equals, so I have 0.59297, and I'm going to divide that by, um, well we already know it's 0 0.0025, so I get that. So I'm going to write that, that number down here. So I have R times 237.1893815. And if I want R, I'm going to divide both sides by that. So now I'm going to do 1 million divided by my answer. And bingo, I get R is equal to $4,216. Four thousand two sixteen and four cents. Okay, so that's um, that was a pretty easy question. The formula. Once you have the formula, it's pretty easy to do the work, right? Okay, so the last question I'm going to do is we're going to figure out the question number eleven from page five twenty one. And it says Pedro, Pedro pays $45 for a portable stereo and borrows the remaining amount. The loan repayments are $25 per month for one year. The interest rate is 18.6% per annum compounded monthly. What is the selling price of the stereo? 
So this again is probably a reasonable interest rate today. Um, yeah, when you're borrowing money, the rates are really high. When your money's in the bank, the rates are really low. That's how the banks make money. What is the selling price? So what, what does it mean when I'm asking for the selling price here? So that's a question asking you for the present value, right? What is it worth today? What is the selling price of it? What would I pay if I paid cash for it? Okay, so for this question, the first thing you need to know is figure out what is R. What is my regular payment? So regular payment is $25 per month. The interest rate is 18.6 per annum. That's percent. So that's 0 0.186 per annum or 0 0.186. 8, 6 divided by 12 per month. Okay, and I think that divides up nicely. It looks like it's going to 0.186 divided by 12 is 0 0.0155. 0 0.0155. Okay, so that's my I. And what is my N going to be? So he says he borrows the money for one year. And it's monthly, so I have 12 payments to make. Okay, so now again, you want to write out your formula. So PV equals R times 1 minus 1 plus I to the negative N, close the bracket, over I. So I'm trying to solve for present value. That's okay to leave that there. So I have 25, 1 minus 1 Point zero one five five to the power of 12, negative 12, divided by 0 0.0155. Okay, so again, on my calculator, I would do the exponent first. So 1, oh, let's do 1 plus second answer. So 1.0155 to the power of negative 12. And I'm going to do 1 minus second answer. So that gives me 0.16854. I'm going to multiply it by 25. And I'm going to divide it by 0 0.0155. And I get 271.84. 271.84. Okay, so what am I going to do with this $45? Right, you should know what to do with that because he paid $45. That's like his down payment, right? He put a down payment of $45 and he paid the rest monthly. So the total price, total price would be $271.84 plus $45. So I'll just add $45 here and we get $316 and 84 cents. Okay, and the last question says, how much interest will Pedro have paid over the term of the loan? How much interest will he have paid? So you need to know how much has Pedro paid? So this was the present value of his loan payments. And if you figure out what he paid, he paid $25 every month so 25 every month for one year, what did he pay? What's 25 times 12? Just that in your head. $300. So $300 was the, um, the amount that he actually paid. This is the present value or the selling price of the stereo. So all I have to do is subtract that from the 300 and that would tell me how much he paid extra. He paid more than the selling price, and that makes sense. So that's 28.16. So that's his interest. Pedro's interest. Not bad. $28 to have your stereo for a year. Sounds a good deal to me. 
Okay, so that's the end of the present value calculations. It's not very difficult. And in the next lesson, our very last lesson, I can't believe we're at the end of this long journey, um, I'm going to show you how to work with the graphing calculator. See you in the next lesson.